I swear eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. Have you received a new copy of the agreement, Mr. President? Yes, I have, Mr. Porterson, but I have not had a chance to read it yet. I think you'll find that this draft approximates what we discussed earlier. Your colleagues, are they confident that the American base will be enough to guarantee the loans to my country? I think you can be assured that the base, along with your plans to denationalize our investments, will be acceptable to most of the bankers, if that's what you want. All your colleagues are concerned with is to reclaim property lost when I assumed control of the country. Perhaps you and your colleagues should study the agreement carefully. There may be alternatives that you have overlooked. Yours, for example. I offer you an opportunity to prevent the Americans from interfering in your internal affairs, Mr. President. Only to allow Portison Investments that privilege, I suppose. If you succeed, the entire Indian Ocean Basin, indeed the entire hemisphere, will be a winner. Can I presume from your interest in geopolitics, Mr. Porterson, that you will back the plan? You can presume, Mr. President, that I did not get where I am by overlooking a good deal. But I suggest that you look carefully at the new copy of the agreement. Our future is in your hands. Then relax. You're in good hands. Excuse us, Mr. President, but you will need time to prepare for the meeting tomorrow. You see, Mr. Porterson, when you are the leader of the People's Revolution, your country comes first. I understand, Mr. President. Good night. Good night, Mr. President. Time to earn your money, Mr. Westy. What do you think of this draft of the agreement? Well, the deal seems equitable, sir, but the choice, of course, is yours. I don't think there is much of a choice. Then you intend to sign the agreement? These bankers have come like hungry dogs because we are offering to return their property to them. In exchange, we ask that they extend us the loans that we need. This agreement with the Americans would seal the deal. Porterson's options would mean that we needn't deal with the bankers, though. But at what price? We must very carefully look at what's on the table as opposed to what they're offering here. I suggest we do just that. We should meet tomorrow morning, two hours before the conference with the bankers, to make a decision. Yes, Mr. President. Good night, gentlemen. So will you sign it? Given Mr. Porterson's options, I don't think there is any other choice. Well, despite what General Locke talk made things, sir, I totally agree with you. Good. I realize that Locke Tuck would like to preserve as much of the past as possible. But times have changed. Yes, sir. And if Mahal is to survive, we must also. 
If you'll excuse me, Mr. Westy, I'm feeling a little tired. Sorry, sir. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. President Pauli has asked me to convey his deepest regrets, but he has been overcome with an illness, and he will not be able to attend this morning's meeting. I sincerely hope it's nothing serious, General. It is too early to tell. General Loktuk, uh, to justify our time here, did the President indicate to you any of his feelings about the draft agreement for the American naval base in Namahal? The President received the draft last night. I would judge his mood as less than pleased by its content. Does that mean he's not going to sign it? It means that Mahal is not for sale, gentlemen. At any price. General, without that agreement, we're in I position. know. You have no guarantee for your investments. I reiterate, Mahal is not for sale at any price. When will the president be ready to give us a firm answer personally? I think you have our answer, Mr. Godfrey. I thought you might like a sandwich, sir. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Bennett. So excited about the trip. <laughs> Forgotten to eat. I understand starvation is the most painful way to die, sir. Well, I'm sure I would remember before it came to that. On second thought, I'm not certain starvation wouldn't be preferable. But in this case, I'm inclined to agree with you, sir. I'll speak to the chef. May I help you prepare anything for the weekend, sir? Oh, no, thank you, uh, Bennett. I'm, I'm nearly ready. Papa, oh, excuse me. Mr. Godfrey's on line five. <coughs> yes. Mr. Addington, uh, President Powie has just indicated that he's not about to sign the agreement for the American base. Really? He didn't show up for the meeting. Lock Tuck delivered the message. Well, what happened to him? Supposedly ill. Godfrey, what the hell's going on? Good question. Lock Tuck's running the show now. How are our colleagues taking it? As you might expect, they're nervous. <clears throat> oh, without the base, Mahal is bankrupt. Or worse, if, if they continue to maintain nationalization, 
The bankers will have no reason to stay. How he knows that more than anyone else? Mr. Addington, you've got to talk to him. He's the only one who can reverse this thing. Yeah. See what I can do. Get me Sinclair. I got you. Die, die. Here we go. Here we go. Get him. Get him. Come on. Come on. Die, man. Where's my air cover? You blew your air cover, I know man. I blew my air cover. Where is it? Deep worms on Didn't drain. you get my message? Not now, Nikki. Please. Come on. Come on. Luke. You're getting old. What can I tell you? Thanks, Nikki. Four hours and I lose to this peanut. Hey, Rambo. Huh? We got a little unfinished business to conclude. What are you talking about? Hand it over. See you, kid. <laughs> Oh, what a mess. Grand Crew Chicago is not going to be happy about this. JJ, when you speak to them, please try and draw the distinction between the petrol tanks and the coffee urn. Satellite, Link. Well, I see you're thoroughly briefed on the Mahal situation. What are your thoughts? Well, the interesting character in the mix is this General Loktuk. Is there anything further to add? Oh, nothing, really. He opposed Powie in the election. He became part of the coalition government. He controls the army. What was the general's platform? Hardline military rule. Uh, usually these guys simply take over. <laughs> He's too smart for that. How he brought the country to freedom. People are with him. Uh, Peter Suzanne has arranged the uh, cover you asked for. All the information you need was sent to the plane. Thanks. Au revoir. Link. Oh. Well, so what are we going to be doing? Well, you'll need to set up a center of operations in the same hotel as President Howie. I suggest you go in undercover. So that as soon as you're installed, you'll be able to move around that much more freely. All right. What do you have in mind? Miss Beaumont, you're the master of disguise. I'll leave you to decide. But please, make it unobtrusive. I have a reservation. My name's Beardmore. Ah, of course, Mr. Beardmore. You're with the Addington Group? That's correct. Your suite is ready, sir. Good. Do you have any bags? Uh, just the one with the you know, old porter. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I have a reservation, please. Yes, sir. Mr. and Mrs. Amos Burkell. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Burkell. We have a suite for you. Yeah, it's a Brattle suite. I'm sorry, sir. The reservation says just a sweep. No, I don't care what your reservation says. You do it for a third time, you gotta do it right. Isn't that right, Sugar? Right? I'm sorry, sir. We just have a sweep for you. I said I want a bridal sweep, please. Oh, honey. Why'd you make such a fuss about a silly room? All we need is a bed. Oh, I suppose you're right, Sugar. Ooh. <laughs> All right, you just give me a sweep, but I want a big bed. Of course. Big bed. One of our best suites, sir. No calls for 24 hours? I would like a case of champagne and enough caviar to choke a horse. Where did these come from? They were delivered a half an hour ago. If the press should get a hold of these... Well, burn them! Burn them immediately! Mr. President, if you're being blackmailed... If? What do you mean, if? Somebody did that to her, not I, Westy. We know that, sir. Then you will find out who did this. Yes, sir. I assume you've received the photos. You must understand... It is in everyone's best interests that they don't become public. I assure you, gentlemen, they will become public if you sign the agreement with the American 
hoje. Mr. Beardmore, General Lockton. I was expecting to see President Powie. The President is indisposed of at the moment, Mr. Beardmore. Can I be of any service? I understand he hasn't signed the letter of intent. That is correct. General, when your president summoned that group of international financiers to Mahal to devise a plan to restore your ailing economy, that agreement was the linchpin of the plan. I attended that meeting, Mr. Beardmore. Things change. No, General, they don't. Your country's problems are exactly the same. And I can assure you that without that military base, there will be no further loans. We have simply decided to study our options. Why should our country sell itself off just to please bankers? If you abort this plan, it will seriously disrupt your economy, possibly even destroy it and bring considerable suffering to your people. If there is one thing our people understand, Mr. Beardmore, it is suffering. One way or another, you'll get your money out of us. <laughs> if it was simply a matter of money. My bank would have called the loan years ago. Mahal is not for sale. Your Mr. Addington knows that. Then tell me, is it your intention to continue to denationalize all the businesses the previous administration took over? You must excuse us, Mr. Beardmore. We are new to this game of international politics, and we will need some additional time to understand our options. Now, if you will excuse me. I will see you at the meeting, Mr. Beardwalk. Mr. Porterson feels that nothing more can be accomplished by a continued presence. Yes, yes, yes. Well, put him on, Godfrey. Will you put him on? Alex? Warren, what's another day, hmm? I'm asking you to stay the course. Give me a good reason why, Alexander. Well, I presume the money would be enough to sway you. Come on. I survived irrational governments in Angola, Mozambique, Zimbabwe. Yes, but to what end, Warren? Most of them are now wastelands. Look, it's not the fate of one man we're discussing. It's four million people in Mahal and God knows how many in the entire basin. You know, President Powie, maybe the Addington Group can do what the rest of us cannot. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to need time. Come on, Warren. Pull one more ace from your sleeve. The others may be packing their bags already. Why should I stay? Well, I'll talk to them. Come on, Alexander. The Porterson Group is an investment company. We never throw good money after bad. I'm aware of that, Warren. I'm aware of that. I thank you in advance. Yeah, I got it. Mr. Beardmore? Yes? They do. Uh, Nicholas Westy. I'm a financial consultant to uh, President Powie. Interesting. The general informs me you wish to uh, speak to the president. Damn right. Along with all my colleagues. Well, look, as soon as the uh, president is well enough, I will personally do everything I can to arrange a meeting for him. Deal with nobody else on this. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's my, my private line. Now, how does he fit into Powie's equation? Well, oh, every faltering economy attracts men like Westy. They all seem to have influential contacts, which make them invaluable to emerging governments eager to be recognized by world finance. Westy's been involved in several such uh, consultations. Where have I heard that before? If I sign the agreement, they will discredit me. If I do not sign, our loans are recalled. Either way, my country and I are lost. I understand all that. Well, if you do, then you will do something. Find out who's doing this. I can't carry on with the charade. I've worked with the police. And end up in jail, Mr. President? After you fought 15 years to free your country, just imagine what will happen if the general takes over. You will lose everything. I placed additional security around your room. Everything's fine. 
Just do everybody a favor. Keep a low profile until we hear something further. This girl had drugs in her purse. Who knows who she's involved with? The girl did not use drugs. Oh, really? My God, how can such craziness happen? Look, just let us handle things. We'll find the perpetrators. I got my operatives in the field right now. Howie's being framed. Do you think Wes is trying to bail him out? Yeah, maybe. I think I'll have a word with the boss. See if he can get Godfrey to postpone the meeting. Probably be a real good idea to keep a close eye on Westy. I got a feeling he's about as close as we can get to Bowie. What? The guards found something while they were sweeping the room. Just leave it right where they found it. I'll be right there, okay? That's the only one they found? So far. Someone suspects something. Brilliant, General. Who else has been in this room? When was Beardmore here? Before the sweep. Who else? Who else? Come on, General, think. Who else? Anybody from your staff? Anybody from the hotel? No, I don't think so. Well, I'm sitting in the room. Nobody gets in here except you and me. Do you think that's going to stop them? That's my job. Your job is keep an eye on your president.
Where's the maid? What do you want? You want a job. You want a what? You want a job. Well, why pick on me? Because we think you're into something very big. Very big. You're crazy. Uh -huh. Yeah, I may be crazy. But I'm not as stupid as you are. You know, there's a cop on your tail? Yeah, you're talking about a cop on my tail talking about a cop following you around watching your every move and if you didn't know that which it doesn't sound like you did then i think we could be pretty useful to you you do huh? yeah i do did we do a name thing here did i miss something mr and mrs jones mr. And mrs jones okay maybe you can't help me out so what's the name of this guy? Ever heard of a guy named Beardmore? Huh? Beardmore. The guy's a cop. You want to help or not? The photo analysis have just come back. They're original. Haven't been touched. Did you turn up anything more on the girl? No. Her body was found in the Rhine Falls, Upper Michigan Peninsula. No ID? None. The bankers are getting ready to fold their tents. Gottfried and Porterson are doing everything they can to make them stay. Oh, do you really think that Westy could be working for Lockton? I doubt it. He only deals with top dogs, people who hold the purse strings. Well, any other potential players? Nobody's tipped the hand yet. I think it's time to proceed as planned. We have no choice, Peter. Good luck. What the hell is taking so much time? We're dealing with blackmailers, Mr. President. We're outside the jurisdiction of normal authorities here. We can do nothing until they contact us. And what about the bankers? They will have to wait, too. They can't wait. They won't wait. And whoever sent those photos knows it. 24 more hours, Mr. President. They will wait that long if there's any chance for them to get their investment returned. Mr. Westy. Yes, General. This Beardmore, he could throw us off track. I already had him checked out. His name is Sinclair. I want out of this. I've done everything I can. Now, I order you, you to... You don't give orders anymore, General. Particularly not to me. Excuse me. Look, Lock Talk is getting cold feet. He's becoming unreliable. How long do we keep this guy around? Not long. Well, what about Beardmore? Well, I've made arrangements. Safe ones, I presume. We're guaranteed to keep our hands clean, sir. Good. Let me know as soon as he's out of the way. 
I gotta go. You rang? What's up? I have a little job for you. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mr. Beardmore? Yeah. <laughs> We want to have a little talk with him. He's bothering a friend of ours. Well, yeah, how much bother has he been? My friend would like to stop him bothering him permanently. Well, it's kind of expensive. How expensive? Well, this guy's a cop, right? That's true. Down payment. <whistles> Call me when you got hold of him. Oh, I intend to stay in touch. Believe me. Tough cookie. It wasn't easy getting this guy to talk, let me tell you. So? So? Turns out he's working for Interpol. Interpol? That's right. Started off looking for missing girls. One thing led to another. Next thing you know, he's asking some questions about a certain president. Do you have anything on him? Like what? Photographs, transmitters, something I might be interested in? You told me to take the guy down and ask him questions. He didn't search his room. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. And while I was there, I ironed a couple of shirts. No, I didn't search his room. Go back to his hotel room and completely search it, understand? Yeah, yeah. check it out. Yeah. Let's get this over with. Finish him. Three shots for a dollar. We're paying you for this, remember? Yeah, I remember. Hope it 
It's all here. It's all there. Stay in touch. I intend to. I tell you, buddy, huh? No sweat, he bought it all the way. What if you haven't bought it? Mm? You weren't supposed to offer him the gun. Well, that seemed like the thing to do at the time. Yeah. What if you'd aim for the head rather than the heart, huh? We can go for your head. Everybody knows your brain dead. Don't you believe that? And don't you ever pull a stunt like that again and jeopardize a mission for the sake of your crazy sense of humor? Take it easy, Pete. Give me the call. We've got a number. Susie, I need a trace. It's a Chicago number, triple five fifty four zero two. I'll feed it in right away. That's Wesley's connection, I presume. Yeah, I think it has to be Alex. By the way, how did it all go? Perfect. Time's running out. There'll be no further postponement after tonight's meeting. Don't worry. Everything will be ready on time. Here it is. Oh, I see. Peter. It looks like we have to revise our plans. Where are you going? to make. I'm going to check on your president. And I want to wish you good luck. I'm afraid you missed him. He just left. Oh, damn. I was supposed to meet him here. <sighs> Think you could buy me a drink? Come, Parry. Straight up. <sighs> if I blow this job. You work for Mr. Weston? Well, I was supposed to. What about you? We do some business. Maybe you could help me. He's going to this big thing with the bankers. If you're going, maybe you could tell him that I showed up. What's your name? Susie. That's with two O's. Oh, I could be very grateful. Mr. General. General Lockton. General. Extremely grateful, General. You know, Mr. Westy told me he was working with some very powerful man. He did. Well, wow. Susie. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll get him. Thank you. Remember Susie, with two L's. I'll tell Mr. Westy I saw you. Oh, thank you. Maybe I'll see you after the meeting.
accept our nation once? Are you looking for an open invitation to do it again? I would hardly describe it as rape, General. On the contrary, you seduced us into believing that our investments were secure. Now, under President Pauly, we all felt that that promise would be carried out. You bled our country dry. General, are you, General, are you saying that you give us no guarantees? There's no such thing as a guarantee. We Particularly when you're asking that we sell our country off for your profit. With all due respect to the President, are you saying he will not stand by his tentative agreement to return our properties and to accept the American naval base in Mahal? I assure you that the people of Mahal will never let you turn our nation into a bordello and leave it bankrupt. <laughs> The debts of the former administrations. Well, congratulations, General. You just flushed your country down the toilet. Excuse my tardiness, gentlemen. I presume the General has indicated that we intend to sign immediately the agreement for the American naval facility in Mahal. With that settled. We are ready to begin discussions about the repayment of your loans to my country oh. and to discuss the prospects of further investment from all legitimate sources. Excuse me, Mr. President, but I think your recent actions preclude your participation in these talks. And exactly what is that supposed to mean, General? Since you are the President's biggest supporter, perhaps you should look at these first. What the hell are these? What are these, General? Tell them, General. And if you won't, I'm sure a friend of Mr. Porterson's will. And if he doesn't, we certainly will. Business for yourself? No, I am actually keeping a long standing appointment with some skeet. So you'll miss the final act, monsieur. Ah, uh, the curtain has come down on that one, I think, Nicky. Westy's soliloquy was enough to put Porterson away. So the king is restored. Without his knight, thankfully. You know, Chief, it seems kind of a waste to shoot that at something that won't even shoot back at you. Well, at least the skeet are on the wing not tied to a chair. Ah, thank you, Peter. You just reminded me of something I had to mention to our friend here. I don't like the sound of this. I was about to leave, but I think I'll stick around now. Well, needless to say, I was appalled by your behavior with a gun. Appalled. Total lack of control. Yes. What was even more curious was the $50,000 the general paid you. 50000 it didn't seem to find its way into your expense report. Chief, I, I, I wanted to talk to you about that. You see, when I was filling out the report, I was having trouble figuring out which column I was supposed to put the money in. Yes, well, you'll need to worry your head about that, Mr. Brenner. Because I shall make a point of it personally to explain it to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, Bennett will hold on to the money. Right. Until I get back. Have a good vacation, sir. Oh, I will, thank you, Will. I will. 